made my iPhone look like this. Oh yeah, I saw that on your Twitter. How long did that take you? Look, this is my face. Uh, Obamagate. It's been going on for a long time. It's been going on from before I even got elected. Want to see the coolest thing I've ever seen in an airplane seat? Do you think that independent creators are the future of media since we've driven so much media and actually shaped all of these companies and figured out how to tell stories in this new landscape that they gave us? So do you think that we're the future and why? I think that yes, but I, I don't think that it's a zero sum game. Meaning that like, I think there's always going to be a place for like the super premium content that you're seeing on you know, Netflix, HBO, Hulu, like they're still making this content and the audience is still there. Like the audience is bigger than ever. If you look at some of the numbers Netflix puts out behind who's watching their $100 million movies, they're enormous. They eclipse yeah. even like theatrical releases. Oh yeah. So I, I think that like there is this bifurcation that's happening with like mainstream content has to be really sexy, glossy, premium because everything else is just being captured by like the independent creator or the new media person or whatever that might be. So I think like what's going to be eaten and destroyed through that is like everything in the middle. Like TV reality shows are just not as interesting. They're just not as compelling right. Right. as someone's actual reality that you might see on YouTube that you can subscribe to. Um, you know, like a lot of sitcoms from like the... 90s and early 2000s there just isn't a place for them anymore because if i want that i'm going to watch some more authentic version of that on youtube or i'm going to watch some super pristine um production that that one of these premium uh streamers is going to have right. so yeah you're just going to watch an old episode of friends <laughs> like you're just going to pull it up when they had it right <laughs> yeah so exactly. i so i i think that new media independent creators are absolutely the future but I don't think they're displacing the entire industry. I think they're displacing this kind of gross middle. I think a good example of that is like MTV. Like what was MTV 10 or 15 years ago? It was just like this reality TV sort of hodgepodge live event, TRL community. It was just this like thing that lacked an identity, but it was all we had, so you just watch it. And then YouTube and social media like just crushed all of it. There's no need for anything that MTV provided 10 years ago. Um, uh, does that make any sense? Uh, oh, okay, okay. I, I, I love TV reality shows, so I will disagree with you on that. I, yeah, maybe I'm the old one here. I love them. Um, I, uh, I think with independent creators, um, I think they are the future, but I think there's a, I think the thing that's missing is the platform for them. I just feel like there's a platform for independent creators that hasn't been made yet that really will um, give them the tools and the money to, uh, to make something new and different that really keeps your attention the way that YouTube does. But I think there's something else there and I'm, I'm gonna come up with it before somebody else does. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I mean, I guess just to tag both of those things, I, I was watching a documentary about just decades and movies in the movie business, and I loved this episode about the 70s because it was talking about how, you know, the 60s were just these, like, huge budget studio things, and then by the end of the 60s, the studios were all, like, gasping for air because television had become so big. And so the 70s brought these huge, you know, studios giving, like, small directors, like, little budgets and being like just make a ton of stuff we'll we'll like give you like full creative control you can walk in here and pitch me something and i'll give you the money and you go make it and so you have all of these super character driven movies and all of these um super unique directors like george lucas who like has no clue like his first movie is completely bizarre and then his second movie is like star wars you know and i think that like it does feel like we're heading into that time in online video creation where it's like people need content we're all at home and even if we weren't we're all on our phones all day 
Uh, and so people want stuff to watch and there are so many cool, unique voices now that I think that I feel like maybe we're the future. <laughs> like we're also hella the present. Like I think that like the future makes it sound like it's distant. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure most of the stuff I'm watching right now on repeat and obsessed with are these cool independent creators. So I think it's kind of us. <laughs> What do you think any of this sort of landscape is going to look like in the next decade? And it's okay if you don't know, because I definitely don't know. But like, if you had to guess, where are we headed? It was kind of, you know, it it was kind of cool. Like the, I guess the the last genre, the last official genre that was created was mockumentaries. Like that's like the, and it was in the 70s or something like a while ago. And that this idea of like a documentary that's not a real documentary, but it's shot like a documentary. Now we have reality shows that aren't really reality shows, but they're shot like a reality show. And it's just like taking the format of something else and like, but scripting it. And I just feel like the, the lip sync videos I did kind of we're edging on to something like that, taking an, a, an audio clip, not changing it at all, but giving it a different visual. And like, that's a lot of what TikTok is, is like you take one thing and you make 18 different things with it, or sometimes hundreds of thousands of different things with it. People take one thing and they are able to make all of these different inter interpretations with it. And I think it's fascinating. And I feel like there's something to that that might be the future where we, are watching something, but we're also in it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. It's difficult, but I think what's most exciting about the future for me is uh, Sarah just touched on it with TikTok, but like I think what TikTok's done is it's, it's, it's made it so easy to create original pieces of, of video, and that's what you're doing on TikTok. I think most people who make TikTok videos don't even acknowledge that that's what they're doing. But TikTok is editing software, there's audio options in there, there's filters, there's digital effects. That, it's gotten so easy. And then I think there's also like, you know, there's like what you can do if you have like good editing software. If you have Adobe Premiere, Adobe. Um, what you can do with, with Premiere and a video camera now is effectively what an entire production suite, production studio, production company was needed to do a decade ago. So if you just kind of follow that trajectory, of like everything from like a soup to nuts video creation and distribution tool right here. Or if you really want to go pro, like on your laptop, on your phone, you can create the same thing. YouTube is a video distribution platform that currently has what, 2 billion users or some insane number like that. It's consuming the whole world. Um, and anybody can post anything. So I think like ignoring a lot of the, you know, maybe scarier political implications of, of these tools, because that's not my bag. I'm much more into the creative, exciting side. I just think that the day where anyone can be a video creator, where anyone can share a story, their story, any story using these tools, that day is like right on the horizon. Like we can just, we're almost there. And when that happens, I do think that's when we're going to see a real avalanche of new genres, new kinds of storytellings, new means of communication that I'm very optimistic, I'm very excited about.